Welcome to December's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is reach a number. You are standing at position 0 on an infinite number line. There is a goal at position target. On each move, you can either go left or right. During the nth move, starting from 0 or 1, you can take n steps. So on the first move, you can take one step forward or backward. On the second move, you can make two steps forward or backward. And we want to return the minimum number of steps required to reach the destination. So I suppose you can assume that there will always be an answer here. Now, our target will be a non-zero integer. It could be negative, it could be positive, but you can see it'll be quite large here. So the very first approach we might think is kind of similar to like the stairway problem. Maybe we can do a recursive solution. Maybe we can do breadth first search. Uh, probably that would be the best. And just calculate the paths that we can go and find the minimum number of steps that it takes to reach our target. So to do that, I'll start with creating a queue. And what we'll do here is add a list uh, with a tuple of the position starting at zero and the number of moves, which also starts at zero. So while we have a queue, we'll first pop off our uh, tuple and we'll say, okay, first item is a position, second item is a turn, and we will pop left. Uh, if the position equals the target, then we can return the turns. Otherwise, we want to append to our queue um, the position plus what uh, turn plus one, as well as the turn plus one. And we'll do the same thing for backwards as well. And all we need to do is subtract position minus turn plus one and add turn plus one. So hopefully uh, this should uh, eventually find a position that equals the target and we can turn the number of turns it took to get there. So uh, for example, let's say we had mm, three. This should equal um, two, I believe, and it does. Uh, what about five? The code's a little slow today. Um, this, I believe, should be three. Oh, no, it's five. Okay, well, it does seem to work. But here's the problem. What if we start increasing the number to like 500? Um, the, fortunately, this solution here is very inefficient because we're finding literally every path possible. Um, and it's going to start getting really exponential here. I believe it's time complexity wise, two to the nth power. You can see that it's not even a time limit exception. We just run out of memory in our queue. All right, so let's rethink our approach. Um, we can't do this. Uh, is there some sort of intuition we could find from using these numbers to reach our target? So say that our target was, I don't know, 12, okay? Um, what would be, if we just added these numbers all the way up, right? At which point could we say, okay, we've either gotten to the target or gotten greater. So here we'll see if we just add these all up, it's 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. All right, so at step 5, uh, we've reached a target of 15, right? So really, uh, all we need to do is find the difference. What's the delta here? Delta is going to be equal to 3. And we need to just subtract the number um, to reach our target number here. So if this was, say that it wasn't 15, I had a target of, or not 12, I had target of 13, let's say, uh, then our delta would become what, two, right? Then all we need to do is subtract two. Um, and to do that, we would have to find a number um, and divide it by two, since we're taking, since, since it's going backwards, it's kind of like you have to multiply by two. Uh, so say that here with four, we just subtract that, we would get Let's see, we'd say one, three, six. We take four steps back, so now it's two. So now it's five. Oh, that doesn't work. Um, what about here? If we took one, subtracted by one, now it's gonna be one, four, eight, 13, right? So all we need to do here is make that a subtract. So slowly some sort of intuition comes out here. Well, what we do is find the delta, we divide that by two, subtract, make the negative for that number, um, and that should work. But that only works if this delta is even. Our original problem, if that delta was uh, 
odd like this, if we divide that by 2, it becomes 1.5. Well, there is no number here to reach that. So if that happens, well, we only have one other option, which is to add a step and to see if that creates a delta of even so that we could uh, solve our problem. So this here, we can see, all right, we add 6. Now our delta is going to be 9. Unfortunately, it's still odd, right? So that, that um, starts bringing up some interesting reasons. What, what happens is, depending on what move we're on, uh, if we're on an odd move and our um, delta is also odd, well, that isn't going to work because our next move number is going to be even. So if we add even plus odd, remember, recall that it was uh, even odd, it becomes odd again. So to combat that, we have to add it again. Uh, now it's odd number plus odd number becomes 16. So now we can actually do it. Now we just need to find um, a combination of eight, subtract that, and then it would work. We just, I think, subtract these two, and then we should get our target. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but I think we can start thinking about what this entails. The very first thing is whether it's positive or not, the target, it really doesn't matter because uh, all we need to do is flip the uh, positive negatives and the answer will be the same. So we can just say, okay, um, make our target absolute. And what we'll do is we'll start with K, which is going to be the move we're on. And we'll say while target is uh, what greater than zero, what we're going to do is add to our number of turns, and we're going to subtract to our target, the k. So once we finish this, we now know how many turns it took to exceed our target, and we should have a delta, right? So this depends here uh, whether the delta right now, which would be target, um, is odd or even. So if the delta, if target, Currently, this should be our delta. If it's um, even, then we can just return k, all right? Otherwise, if our delta is odd, then we need to think about, okay, is our um, turn that we're on odd as well? So if the k is, uh, if we're on an even number, then we can just return k plus one. Otherwise, if we're on a, if we're on a, odd number, then we actually have to return k plus 2. All right, so let's see if this works. 500. Uh, looks like it's working, so let's submit that. And there we go, accepted. Now, this solution definitely was not what I was expecting. How did I come up with this? I looked it up. All right, like I did not come up with this. Um, I find it very hard to believe that somebody would be able to come up with this solution on the spot, uh, seeing it for the first time. But there's a couple uh, interesting takeaways here. First thing to remember is uh, if we can't go with a recursive approach, there's probably some sort of greedy approach that we could take or some sort of mathematical approach. And second thing I think we can take away from here is recall that uh, odd plus even is going to equal um, odd and odd plus odd is going to equal even and that might help if you ever see some sort of problems like this again and that's it so thanks for watching my channel and remember do not trust me i know nothing